theme emerging of uh, technology and very contemporary issues, it's safe to say this doesn't really address any of that. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so, sorry if this seems a little bit kind of left field, considering what's been yeah. said previously. Well, but I mean, it's, it's nice I mean, to, to be actually here with um, kind of hearing about practice and things, uh, products and, and um, clients, and actually to see an organization like Fumbly where mm. you're bringing people together, doing things in the real world, and you're collaborating. Um, and there's a lot of talk about that. You know, the last 10, 15 years been about collaboration in industry across. I mean, I'm, I'm an architect. So I, I think it says we're both lecturers in architecture, but I'm not. I'm an architect, <laughs> and, and Liam, Liam is a graphic designer. Yeah. Um, so, but we're both um, we both teach in our respective schools of architecture and design and art and design. Um, so part of this was about us kind of finding a, a, a shared interest in, in urban design and, and place and, and space being. But also it was about this notion of collaboration as something we talk about. And I came from practice into teaching. Um, and I think Liam's name, the same. So we don't, we're not kind of academics from trade. We're yeah. used to kind of having to do things across disciplines. And yet when we come into the university, we get kind of packaged into different spaces. And the collaboration doesn't normally tend to happen except either by accident or on a very temporary kind of short term yeah. uh, basis. Um, and we kind of fell together in a way through a response to a part of Belfast, which is called, now it's called Smithfield and Union. Mm -hmm. It has had six or seven different names. I think it's been the Northwest Quarter, it's been the Smithfield Market Library, something or other quarter. It's about the seventh quarter that Belfast has. So maybe we can't do our math up there. But yeah. um, And um, I mean, I'm not, not from, from uh, this part of the world, you might, a little bit left from my, my accent. So we're trying to sort of bring different perspectives to this. And anyway, we were asked to kind of get involved in rebranding of this part of Belfast. That should say Saul McGolden, by the way. And the the architecture department was asked, invited by a, a group of independent traders in this part of Belfast near the University of Ulster. Um, and we were asked to come up with, can your students do um, installations or art projects, you know, to on the wall, and can can the graphic design department come in and brand the place? You know, we have this name. We want the Smithfield Library and Market Quarter to be on a Christmas banner. You know, by by November, and um, and we had never actually worked together, yeah. and it just turned out that we started talking about that's not really what we what we want to do. We want um, you know we're not here to sort of necessarily be to provide you with things. But we we want to this is where we get involved. If you can let us look at the context, if we can start maybe questioning the way you're doing things. Um, and it sort of turned out that, I mean, as an architect, I'm interested in place as this, you know, contested, weird notion. Of, but it's really about kind of understanding history, culture, mm -hmm. people, getting kind of to, to the, the know of things beyond just you know, looking at the surface and saying, that's a neglected part of town. Mm -hmm. Let's um, redevelop <coughs> it or uh, turn it into something beautiful. It's worth, it's worth, it's worth saying that uh, this, this part of town suffered particularly because of industrial problems, but also from the political problems that we had in Belfast. It was pretty much... Uh, neglected in every kind of social and economic way that you, you could. It, it, uh, it also just happened to be where the art school was and uh, about 10 years ago they uh, redeveloped the art school into a bright shiny new kind of uh, campus. Um, the art school's always been here. And by the way, yeah. they want to knock down the 1860s building. So yeah. The new campus which is meant to take over this entire yeah. space. Yeah. Um, so you can see this area here is empty and it's actually not from the troubles. This whole street was not, or that much of the street actually is gone now, just because someone wanted to create a car park, they were hoping that the mall here would expand and wipe out all of these. So there's a lot of empty spaces, but they're not all from the traditional notion of Belfast, that they weren't blown up, they weren't, you know, from anything. This, this isn't a contested area in terms of, you know, one side or the other, it just happens to be a commercial part that has just been devastated. So it has a lot of <coughs> issues which are not necessarily particular to Belfast, but they're particular to cities like Dublin, New York, Liverpool, yeah. um, uh, other places. So, anyway, but so, uh, so architecture was a new course as well, it, yeah. it kind of relatively new to University of Ulster. So th the opportunity just w uh, permitted itself to have conversations and we realized, you know, our students should work together. So this idea of multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary or collaboration that, that Saul is talking about, there's a, lot of, there's a lot said about it, but sometimes we don't really do much about it. And, and Stephen said something interesting in his talk about silo mentality. Well, that's very much the case, yeah. you know, or, or could be the case in art schools as well. So we had this opportunity to, to do... Uh, Maybe I should just say it's not, and this is saying a lot about it's not what it's not. I mean, it, we weren't trying to, again, try to solve the problems of this part of town. So this isn't about our students, 
you know, came together and mm. created the solution. Um, we just thought we'd try and experiment. What if we brought our students together and just asked them to look at things and use the same, use their different skills and how, how does a graphic designer look at things and try to come up with maybe uh, words or images or, or surfaces and things that, mm -hmm. that but try to relate to a history or something that connects to a place where the architects are maybe trying to do something spatial, but maybe you know, at times they overlap. So we sort of realized there are problems and we thought here's an opportunity to um, just test out some different ways of teaching our students so that when they maybe leave school, yeah. college, university, the idea of being collaborative mm. or interdisciplinary or whatever isn't yeah. something that they have to do. They just maybe it becomes part of their DNA as professionals. Yeah. So it's, it, it, we're it hoping when they get out to you, this this yeah. sort of atmosphere isn't something novel. Yeah. It's just like, well, isn't that what we've always yeah. done? So I suppose that was. In, adi in addition, the, the, our students in, in visual communication or graphic design, uh, I realize that they they almost never engage with society. You know, they. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's the other thing. And yet, and yet they put lots of stuff into society, um, in in, for in forms of advertising campaigns and publications and and uh, websites and everything, but they actually never really have to meet real people. Um, so the architects to a certain extent had a lead from that in a sense, but uh, <laughs> you know, they, they... No, but architects don't uh, either. Uh, you, know, yeah. we say, you know, we don't necessarily consider where, where does somebody have to smoke or, you know, yeah. how does the building kind of relate to the street? I mean, all the kind of stuff you probably hear all the time. I won't bore you about kind of the usual things, but, you know, architects tend to go, well, here's my Google map and I'm going to put an art center, a gallery here, and that gallery will then make everyone happy because they'll buy coffee. And then, and so we, you know, we try to avoid to doing and we'll put a big kind of logo on the side of the building. Yeah. So yeah. this is what we were about. We were about, well, how do we just get them just to think about urban storytelling? This is the students after a, a few weeks of just um, reading and writing. We just asked them to start, um, rather than making things, just to start talking to each other. So we had the, this is from the World Cafe. It's called the World Cafe, so which is it, isn't all right. It's yeah, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a franchise idea where you basically have a salon kind of style meeting. So it. it it's basically where you have these kind of over lunch. You, you yeah. really have tables. And yeah. Each table has a things that sound cloth. easy yeah. or yeah. sound casual, but actually you get lots done. Yeah. Where you, you actually the students do directed things, but in a in a way which is much more social and congenial. Um, and this, these were big table spreads that came out of that. Um, so they were asking about what is architecture, what is graphic design, what is the storytelling, what is what is play, what all these things mean. So instead of us kind of trying to tell them, we just said, "You've read some things. You're all adults, you know, and um, maybe while we eat." You could start writing some ideas down, and this was just one of the things that, that came out of out of that. Um, and we asked them also then to go away and start looking at this space, this area, which it, you know didn't have a name, didn't have an identity. Um, and you know, part of it was to say to the, the the traders and people there that maybe you know we'll just look at it, we'll start fresh, and we'll see what we come up with. And, and if if ideas come out, they come out. Mm. Um, but we let the students look at them. So you know, this is a graphic. This is one of your. Well, it's just, it's, just a, it's actually just every student just took a building and it's kind of uh, they're not obviously not architects and uh, the. Uh, <laughs> they're better than architects. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> but it's really actually kind of interesting area because it's got everything from orange halls to funeral parlors to uh, uh, kind of Belfast's equivalent of a red light district if you want you know it's kind of. Uh, and main library and, and stuff like that. So it's actually kind of an interesting area. Yeah, I, mean, so this, um, I mean, that's it sort of there. That's the empty space. All that used to be intact is now car park in case you miss the entrance. You know, the graphics make it quite clear where, where the entrance is. So it, it in fact, in one sense, it could be beautiful, you know, but it's also a space that students also don't want to inter interact with because it looks dangerous or there's, you know, mm. people are strange there or there's broken glass or, you know, they it want to actually just have a beautiful project to do. Can't I just do a gallery for yes. a couple who have wine and make dinner and like to socialize and you know they have a garden that's south facing. You know, that, that's what they want to do because that's kind of the normative <laughs> way of, of teaching. Yeah. That's probably how I was taught. You know, I mean it really feels, sense. this area, I mean like a lot of city areas, that really, feels, it really feels squandered <laughs> and wasted, you know. <laughs> and they give you their money, whereas actually this is sort of yeah, this is the area. <laughs> this is, I didn't stage this, just happened to come, I, I'm not sure when it was taken. But so, you know, there's this, this is kind of the mix, probably the most interesting area of Belfast in certain respects. Um, and we asked them, well, how do you engage with this community? How can you not be afraid? How can you, this was one of the questions we said, well, okay, you're citizens, citizens of this city too. You have a right to engage in it, but how do you kind of teach someone that they have a right to ask questions and engage rather than just, you know, imposing an, an, an idea? And sometimes maybe nothing comes out of it other than, you know, this little table and a flower pot, and it's just about turning a 
street corner into something where maybe somebody sits down and ends up in a conversation. This has been going on for, for a couple of years, and we sort of, in, a, in our teaching role, <laughs> developed this idea about how to take students from an abstract, this purely abstract individual world of images through kind of this idea about storytelling and exploring to more kind of concrete experiments, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's, it's not necessarily formal. We called it talk because it's teaching act and learning knowledge, and it's, you know, we have architects and graph. We like to have well, one things of the, that, that put you some can, kind of framework can, on it. You yeah. can put a framework yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. But it's about talking and it's about engaging, yeah. so it, it kind of yeah. organically happened that way. But yeah. Well, one of, I think what, that, what happened was we, we tried to develop a, a sort of a, a, a process that we could actually point to and say we did this and then we did this rather than we just sent them out there and, and to see what happened, yeah. you know. So we, we, we gave them readings. Um, we did a residential in the area as well, which was interesting. There's a, a pretty run-down hostel in the area and we stayed there and spent two nights just photographing, two days and two nights photographing the whole area. So there's lots of... Real engagement, real kind of, uh, and I think it's probably the only time we could say that our students actually went out into the world and, and had something to do with it yes. before we unleashed them, you know. I mean, th this, uh, was the, this was the World Cafe, so it was, I mean, it started off quite, as I said, or organically in a way. We didn't necessarily start off with a structure, that very neat map you know, <laughs> that, that is here was after maybe about six to eight months, and we, we ran it for two years, so we started to kind of pull things together. Um, but this is just having them engage with each other and us trying to step back also as, as tutors and things. What's happening there, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the culmination is, is this, uh, what we came, again, it uh, has, has a name to it. This one, the machine yes. for experiential urban learning, is again kind of keeping, trying to keep the, some of the idea, but we decided or it, it, we realized that one was too object oriented after the first year, orientated, oriented. Structure. So it was too much of a structure. Yeah. Too, too much of a structure. It was too much about we, the architects yeah, making something yeah. and then someone applying something to it. So we wanted to turn it into a process. And Saul loves acronyms. Um, I love acronyms. And uh, <laughs> but I just Saul thought I just thought it was a, I just <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was a really cool name. So we uh, we, we like this idea of the machine being a, a process rather than a, a thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, there is a there's a machine. Um, this guy Bill Hillier talks about. Um, you know, space is the machine, and he's written about it, about space syntax. And that's more about mapping how people move through spaces, and, and you plot that, and you get up with a, a lovely colored graph. That red is, you know, 100 people per, per minute, and green is five people. This is about not about the machine not being about that, but about how the students and people in an area and how this, the, the physical space, the cultural space, and the history all come together just to try and reveal to something or to question something about an area. So we're not trying to say, you know, this corner is perfect for a cafe, but maybe this corner is underused. And the notion of William White's idea about triangulation. Yeah. How do you get students to talk to people? William White's a New York um, urbanist from, from the uh, 60s and 70s, and his idea about triangulation was adding something into a space that makes strangers talk to each other as if they weren't strangers, mm -hmm. you know, which is a beautiful uh, kind of, uh, I, I, and this was Culture Night in Belfast, um, where people just can, once you start laughing about something, and it could be an art installation, it could be cultural, it could be a sculpture, you know, the Calder sculpture is one of his favorites, it could be a view, mm -hmm. you know, something that just someone goes, wow, look at that, and just um, kind of gets people to talk. And we thought, instead of clipboards and asking people questions, maybe we could create some sort of, the mule was like, maybe you could do something that triangulates and allows people to kind of just start talking, and then you can ask questions, mm -hmm. and then you can say, well, you know, where are you from? You're from this area, you know, talk about the history of a place, um, and start engaging with, with I guess, local residents or, or businesses rather than kind of standing on the street and jumping in front of them and saying, hi, you know, can you tell me about this place? Can you give me three things? So it, it was a bit about a slightly more a way of engaging, but, um, but also kind of taking up this, this notion. It could be something mm -hmm. quite benign, mm -hmm. like, you know, culture night, but it could also, you know, this is the, um, the Bank of Ireland in the middle of Belfast, which was occupied until last week. Um, and that itself is a bit of triangulation. Yeah. It makes people, it, it's engaging with social issues mm -hmm. rather than maybe cultural issues, but it, mm -hmm. it is a way of getting people to, to I talk. I mean, it's a, that's a, it's worth saying, that's a beautiful uh, Art Deco bank um, near, near the art school. It's been vacant for about 10 years, unfortunately. But, uh, so Hitta has all that kind of presence of the kind of elite financial world that's maybe no longer. And then you've got this kind of branding that the city council is doing, you know, um, notionally kind of developed through, you know, discussions with school kids and things like that, um, trying to create this kind of nice, you know, surface sheen across everything. And then these Occupy Belfast people come along, take over the bank and, and change the nature of the corner. 
So that was very, it was very interesting to see that. That happened just after we'd finished our project, yeah. but it was kind of, it was almost as if that could have been one of the projects because it wasn't about creating a neat outcome. It was about, um, you know, it was about you know, tr calling attention to a space and seeing whether um, an event or a structure or a happening or anything could, could change the, the perception I mean, if, of it. If anything, the Occupy movements um, have shown that while well, it, I think the discussion of the book isn't dead, but also that public space isn't dead. And the idea that public space is irrelevant because of social media and the internet, the Occupy movements actually kind of have made this, the notion that while you can be connected, they don't, didn't have meaning until they kind of occupied the space. And also they gave those spaces new meaning, um, which is just an interesting aside, but um, it's, it's sort of a role that how do you kind of give meaning and understand public spaces? Um, and this was actually the inspiration for the mule. These guys used to go out into the city. With paper? With paper, and they would take over certain spaces. And just by kind of how they'd set up, you know, they knew if I set up in a certain place, I'll engage someone, I'll get them to buy more papers. And that we thought was just, you know, it's, it's almost an innate way of, of, of spatially dealing with things, but also setting up your graphics, your, you know, so you, how you, you sort of work with people. Um, so part of it was about, you know, again, the urban side was one thing, but then the teaching side was how do you get people within the university to do that without, you know, ticking all the boxes for learning outcomes and all that sort of thing that, that we, you, know, you get kind of restrained with. Um, so, you know, team working. I had to get them to understand that they're working as a team and that no one sort of has a, has a priority. Um, and part of it was to get them to do these experiments, to these mules, where they were kind of tasked to find empty spaces, empty parts of the city, and not to necessarily make something that said this is a new project, but just to find a way of exploring whether it was a corner. Maybe do you, you know, emphasize that a corner is empty, or it could have been rubbish, it could have been um, just a, a, an island in the middle of, of, of the road, or it, um, a place to sit. And how did they then go about kind of coming up with something that was either kind of sculptural, um, engaging with kind of surveys as well. So it was also about collecting data, but not doing it in the usual sort of jump out in front of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we didn't set them a task. We didn't say, we didn't, there was no brief, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. It was just mm -hmm. find a space, mm -hmm. um, explore it, um, and just do something that would kind of maybe make people stop. Mm -hmm. It's almost like slowing people down, the idea mm -hmm. of delay, making them notice something. Maybe they walk by it every day, but just to give them that, that mm -hmm. moment of... These words of are worth, worth mentioning. There's a lot of words that we use in, in education, um, but sometimes it's very hard to get the students to connect with what the words actually mean. So th this process, you know, got them to do, you know, things like taking risks, like being in uncomfortable situations, talking to real people, um, advocating on behalf of what they uh, were trying to do or what they would like to do. Um, you know, a project like this really, really helped with that. Sometimes it was trying to challenge the, the uh, they were sort of ephemeral projects, but sometimes they were mixing cultures in Belfast, but mm -hmm. taking over a corner. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they actually engaged with the police, with local people. They did, they did quite a lot. Um, they, they really, but and, and sometimes it was just taking something which you, know, you might walk by. And this was just, uh, a project where they, um, they found this old derelict building. And they projected just this idea about cherishing these tracks. And they kind of went about finding a way of getting access to another building to project yep. that and it was just yep. that momentary kind of combination between graphics and, and architecture and that we thought was, was mm -hmm. just a nice outcome um, and because they were visual and they had lots of cameras we ended up with so many photographs and, and documents of these things that it actually was something we thought was worth worth sharing and I think this is maybe important this notion of difference and complexity which giving them an ability if that was a skill it wasn't a skill necessarily design something but it was having negotiate this idea of difference in society, difference in, in the world, mm -hmm. and that, that is increasingly complex, and that you have to build up yeah. um, more relationships, not necessarily with with uh, a solution in mind, but just maybe this Absolutely. Idea of finding yeah. finding beauty in something that someone mm -hmm. has o overlooked. Um, so that that was kind of the, the main work, and you know we're still dealing with these kind of dead spaces in in the city, but that's something different. But out of that, actually, it's something quite a little concrete. Well, well yeah, the, uh, uh, sort of a, a alongside that, uh, a, a sort of a local trade community organization uh, asked, asked Sol and I to look at branding the area. And, and as Sol said early on, I think they just wanted uh, a nice logo to put on, their, on a banner for, for Christmas. Um, but uh, one of the things that we found from spending time in the area was something that it was always been there and we never really kind of put previously fully um, 
appreciated was these uh, lovely street signs, uh, ceramic street signs in Belfast. Um, and, uh, and a type of lettering which we haven't seen in any other city. Um, it's, not, it's, it's actually not a particularly good uh, type of lettering, but it is kind of unique and it's kind of probably more like a sign writer's block sans serif. Um, but these are from about the turn of the 20th century, but they're kind of, they're still very prevalent in that area. So we just, very simple idea just emerged. We took them and created this uh, um, brand device for Smithfield and Union. And it's BT1, and you know, they used to go around afterwards and paint the postcode under, the under or on the street sign because postcodes would have been introduced after that. So Smithfield, just so for, there's yeah. a Smithfield market mm -hmm. is the it's kind of the cornerstone. Yeah. It's been there for about 300 yeah. years. It was burned down yeah. in the 80s, but Smithfield is the market. And Union, Union Street Union is the Union Street that runs right through the middle of the area, and mm -hmm. it connects Donegal Street, which is one side, with North Street, and and so. Uh, it was actually through the students and, and working with that, that spine yeah. and uh, the, the market were the, the kind of the main yeah. entity. So we yeah. just uh, kind of bringing them together. So then we were able to develop that into uh, you know a publication about the area, um, you know, with 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 its own unique typography and and and, and photographs that we we'd either taken ourselves or or some of our students had taken. They wanted a glossy. They did really want something glossy like um, Titanic Quarter or Victoria Square, and that's literally what they wanted originally. Yeah. And they, you know, we tried to bring graffiti artists and all sorts of things to, uh, but I think what was nice about this, and I think it was, and, and most of it was, is Liam's work um, with some of the graphic design students actually in the photographs and taking the photographs, is that we could, we were able to convince them that they have all this great things. You've got the old boxers who are now barber shops. You've got tattoo parlors next to dance halls, next to um, the, the um, Carnegie Library. Uh, and so you have all these things which are actually already fantastic about this place and what they were trying to do was kind of wipe it out and create a new brand. I think so they thought they wanted to be like a, a typical mall kind of yeah. thing, you know, um, where w what we said was, you know, the area is the way it is and it, it's, it's kind of grittiness and, and so on was, was part of it. So yeah, yeah. it was that idea of being really trying to make our, our design uh, sensibility sensitive to context as opposed to parachuting in um, the latest you know font or the latest uh, architectural style or whatever that might be so uh, and that was that was the purpose of the project we ended up um, writing about it from a, a education point of view but also because we had so many great photographs and because Liam being the, the graphic design side you meant it was an architect trying to put a book together which I now know doesn't quite work usually. Um, we tend to think we can do everything, but uh, that's, that's the, the beauty of this is realizing actually, yeah, uh, when someone knows what they're doing. Um, so we end up putting a book together about it and um, uh, and just kind of gathering the, the stories and kind of the, the lessons for it. And um, and it, we're trying to just, we literally just came out with it last month and we're trying to maybe distribute that about. We're not sure what to do with it or what's the next step, mm -hmm. but uh, anyway, that, that's it there. We, we brought a few copies down. Um, there's only a price on there, so when we send them off to places like architecture centers or graphic design or other places that maybe they'll keep them out on the shelf rather than stick them in the bin or something. Uh, but we've brought a few down if anyone's interested in them. Uh, we could probably hmm? give them away. Yeah, yeah. Well, so. Okay, thanks very much. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank you.